Inizia in questo momento la sedicesima edizione del festival Il Rumore del Lutto, una rassegna molto particolare, un festival di death education che intende proprio sensibilizzare le persone al fatto che la morte fa parte della vita. Lo facciamo da 16 anni, da più punti di vista. Il punto di vista dell'architettura lo scopriremo questa sera con Anna Eringer. Eh, la cosa che tra l'altro mi riempie di particolare soddisfazione è il fatto che questa platea che è composta da architette e architetti, ma non solo, quindi c'è una, una larga parte di cittadini, quindi non di specialisti del tema, che è la cosa che ci interessa maggiormente, cioè portare la cultura architettonica nell'animo di tutti noi. Sì, a me ha colpito moltissimo una sua eh, frase che riguarda la responsabilità, la responsabilità di ognuno ma anche del, dell'essere architetto. E lei diceva io prendo molto a cuore la responsabilità di essere un progettista e ogni volta che penso a un progetto, ogni volta che penso a un'idea, provo a moltiplicarla per 7 miliardi per vedere che risonanza e che impatto possa avere sulla società e sull'ambiente. Salve Palma! I'm so happy to be here. I've seriously never ever had such an incredible, amazing, beautiful lecture space. It's such an honor. Thank you for the invitation. Thank you also for the very cordial preparations. And also thank you to my family who is here tonight, which is also really special to me. When I was a um, development learner at an organization in, in Bangladesh, I went there when I was 19 years old. And what I had learned, it was that the most um, effective strategy for development and for resilience and sustainable development is always to look at the resources that you have available around you, within you, within your network, and trying to make the best out of it with your own means. And this is what I tried to put into architecture then a few years later. So the resources that I worked with were right under my feet. It was the mud, the earth, and the bamboo that was growing all around. And as energy source, it was people. When we think of, of energy sources, we always think of, lately we talk a lot about gas, we talk about oil, of course, sun and wind. But sometimes we always see that every one of us, every person is also a source of energy. The children all signed with their names and the doors and they rightfully did so because they also helped building the school. So in the afternoon, after the normal classes, they would come to the site and normally they have creative lessons like clay, clay pottery work and, and, and arts and so on. And we just had pottery work in a slightly larger scale, in the scale of walls and schools. But with, with earth, you know, it's just such a wonderful feeling to touch the earth and have your hands in that material. And that makes it so inclusive also because you can only use the hands as, an, as a tool. You don't need any sophisticated machinery. And for me, that inclusiveness um, of this material is really one of, of the beautiful characteristics. And I guess you can all imagine how it feels in the end, when you stand in front of the school as a small boy or a small girl, and then you, you just feel, wow, I did this. You know, with just using my muscles and the dirt underneath my feet, that just gives such an enormous boost of confidence in your own potentials, in yourself, in the group around you, and also in the local materials that usually have a very bad image. And mud is the only material you can take from the earth You can use it as it is and um, you can recycle it as often as you want without any loss of quality. Because when we talk about recycling, that often also means that we need a lot of energy to, to get it again to the same quality or very often we downcycle. But the earth, it's always the same quality. And if you don't need a building anymore, you can just return it back to the ground it came from and plant your garden on top. Our society, I think, is suffering from perfectionism. It's like we are so much trimmed to have the perfect surface, the perfect uh, picture and so on, and we always get it with all the filters, you know, in, in our mobile phones and so on. This, this kind of um, seeking for perfection is also causing a lot of mental problems, I'm really convinced. And with sur being surrounded with materials that are not perfect because they're natural, they have their cracks, they have their variations in colors and so on. They are, on, they are not homogeneous, they are imperfect in a way. 
but in a way it's also so healing and so comforting that you know, okay, it's fine that you feel weak. It's fine that you don't feel perfect. And it's also fine in a way, you know, that um, life is coming to an end. It's also, we are so afraid of death in our society. And I feel that the, the core problem of sustainability or, or what keeps us from building really sustainable and building in harmony with nature is our fear of decay and death. And um, if we want to build in harmony with nature, we have to accept that death and decay is part of the natu natural cycles. And that is part of nature. And that everything will come to an end. I mean, of course, when, when we see places like this, we know they stand for a very long time. But in the end, everything will erode one day. And we have to accept this too. And we, I think we don't have to be afraid because it's also giving space for new, new um, ideas, new horizons, future generations. Thank you.